All right. So that being said, welcome and thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Sam Powell. I am a realtor out of Chicago, Illinois, and my co-host, uh, Jolie Waldeck, is a realtor out of Las Vegas. Hi, guys. <laughs> and so today, it's going to be a pretty intimate um, small group for training, which is awesome, and uh, which also means that we might have the ability to do some more detailed question and answers um, as we get through the training that we brought put together for you guys. We've got like three samples that we're going to, examples that we're going to go through, but we thought we'd give you just a cursory overview of what this program is and what it's about before we have Jolie share her screen and sort of lead us through the uh, very detailed step-by-step -step examples of some of the power that this uh, very simple, robust application has. One of the favorite things we like about it is because it's um, an online resource that it's available to all of us. Um, it's also free, and so we love that it's free and available to all of us. I have a background in photography and digital imaging and so have an inner working knowledge of the robust application Photoshop. And this is kind of a super awesome baby version of that technology. And so we love it for some of the simple edits that we might want to make for things, part of Women's Council, for our real estate business, or whatever industry you might be representing who's joined us here today. So one of the things that we wanted to share about it is it opens almost any kind of image format that you have. So let's say um, you had a file type and you needed an application that you wanted to pull it into, required it to be a different kind of file type. This application would allow you to bring it in, uh, do some enhancements, and then save it down as a file in the file type that you might need for that application. So that's kind of a nice little tiny, tiny nugget. Um, And, and that was sort of the biggest piece of the puzzle. So we would encourage you to either just follow along now, um, or if you're able to do a split screen and pull up the application and try to model a little bit of what Jolie is doing, we don't mind that either. Um, just know that if you, if you need our attention or you have a question or you have a concern, for sure if Jolie is going too fast or too slow, <laughs> feel free to unmic yourself and uh, mm -hmm. make sure that we know that because our teaching style happens to be pretty fast and furious. And so we're trying to be a little more mindful to slow it down just a little bit, especially when we're playing in a shared screen because our um, movements tend to get a little bit crazy and jerky and fast and annoying. So know that we're being conscious about that. Right, Jolie? Yes, so we are. <laughs> so that being said, I am going to turn it over to Jolie so she can get us started on these examples. You're going to hear from both of us through the remainder of this presentation, so buckle up. Hi guys, I'm so excited. Okay, I am here on the Pixlr website, and when you're on Pixlr website, which is just pixlr.com, you are going to have two options, the X and the E. We're gonna be playing with the X option today. It's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to use, uh, compared to the E, the E is a little bit more in depth. If you've ever used Photoshop, it's pretty similar to that. We are going to be working on a couple examples. And like Sam said, we will be doing some fun, simple, easy examples. One thing I was playing with today, and we're actually going to be working on this, is just this quote graphic. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to make that today through Pixlr. So I just wanted to show you that, just kind of show you the end product of what we're working on. So for our first example, I wanted to make something a little bit simpler that you guys can follow along. And so I'm going to be using the horse photo on the bottom right here. You can play around with Pixlr. They give you a couple different options to play with. And so I just chose the horse one to have some fun. On the sidebar on the right hand side is a little navigate side. And I want to highlight this because you are going to have your layers right here. The layers can get a little complicated and I'll show you how they work in a bit. Uh, just be conscious of this little area because this is an important area. You want to make sure that you know how to duplicate, which I'll show you. Um, your zoom in, you have a couple different ways you can zoom in. And if you click your space bar, uh, you can also just kind of move and grab your photo however you need. So let me get this all set up. 
So when I was creating that graphic on the horse one, uh, I wanted to be able to put that in a Facebook cover photo. And so Sam and I actually spent a lot of time yesterday trying to figure out the sizing perfectly for the Facebook cover photo because Facebook, I think, changes it very frequently. And so Sam, do you wanna put that in the chat box, the, um, the pixel size? Yeah, absolutely. And, and let me just add this little layer to that piece of the conversation is um, if you're creating a cover photo um, for a Facebook page, it's uh, advisable to create it to the um, mobile cover uh, dimensions because then it works in both interfaces. But if you design it strictly for the website, um, it doesn't tend to translate as well in a mobile device. So we encourage building it for the mobile device because then it tends to play nicely in both. Um, and so the pixels, just so you know, as I'm going to paste it in um, the chat, is 820 pixels by 312 pixels um, is the space that you're playing in. But the actual dimension is 461 pixels. But she'll, she'll explain as she goes through it. Yes. So now, since we kind of talked about the, let me minimize you, Sam. Okay. Yep. So we talked about the navigate side, the right hand side. Now we're going to head over to the left hand and we're going to be talking about properties first. This is where you're going to resize your image. There are two different things that you can do. You can resize or you can canvas size. For this specifically, I recommend resizing and I'll show you the differences between the resizing and the canvas. So let me show you the canvas size just before we kind of get into starting this. Now the canvas size is really cool because you can choose a specific anchor point that you want it to crop down to. So if I put in here. Without, without, without a camera. So this is my picture right now. So with your canvas size, just I put in the uh, cover photo show my face. Just to be able to play around with it. No, You're going to see the anchor point in the cropping. So if I do the center, it's going to crop just specifically the center of that photo. You can play around with it. You kind of see that you can do a couple different things. And this is through the Women's Council? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now let's resize this into your Facebook cover photo. And you want to take out the constraint proportions. It, they think you're kind of putting in the wrong proportions and they wanna make sure that you know that. So when you click apply, you can see that you are on your Facebook cover size. So that is in your property section. So now we go to arrange and you always want to, and this is always the first rule, once you figure out the, the sizing that you need to work with is you need to duplicate because sometimes we do get a little crazy in over editing and so you want to be able to have that kind of to go back to if you need to uh, restart or if you can't, you know, figure out how uh, maybe you went a little too crazy because sometimes we have that happen. So always just make sure that you duplicate this so that way you have a backup to get to. I always say to protect ourselves from ourselves so that you can <laughs> always go back to the original file. And it's amazing how handy you'll find that as you get knee deep in building something. That's true. So now we, we're not really gonna touch the crop section. Um, and so we are going to get into cutout. Now the goal for me is I want to get rid of the background of the sun and I wanna be able to put clouds back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on magic cutout and I am going to turn up my tolerance to about 87 ish mm -hmm. and I am going to click on any part that I want to remove I like this little magic cutout section just because it does most of the work for you and then what you can do is you can go into any parts that it didn't cut out and you can either click it or you can come back over here and click on the draw cutout and kind of highlight any sections that you need to. So if you wanted to get down to the nitty gritty and click on those little pieces that didn't get out, you absolutely can. Obviously some images you have to, you know, if you're doing portraits, so it, it's an easy, nice tool to be able to use. But with this specifically, we really don't have to. So we have the background cut out now. Hey, Jolie, 
Yes. And also, um, if, it could, if it bothered you that the mountains were a little bit jagged um, because of the way the magic wand sort of selected the pixels, mm -hmm. you can use your little brush. And I would encourage zooming in so that you can see the mountain's edge um, because you can change the softness of the paintbrush that you're using, for lack of a better term. And you can soften that edge so it has a much more natural transition. Um, and so she can show you just a little bit of what that looks like, um, but for the purpose of the of the exercise, yeah. And so, it, and you, so you can see it sort of does a much nicer job if she draws along that edge. There you go. And so that would make a really nice substantial difference in the in the finished product. Um, for, but for the sake of this exercise, we're just going to have her proceed. Cool. Okay. So. Because this is going to be going onto my Women's Council page, I want to add the logo into this and creating another layer of that. So to add an image, there are two different places that you can go. You can either go on the right hand side and click just this little plus sign and you will just attach your image here. Or you can go on the left hand side on the bottom. It's the last option and click add image. When you click that, you will want to go to browse and we'll go and play with the stock images in a second, working on that background. And you just want to pull up the logo once you have it saved on your computer. You can go on to WCR.org and find that logo for you. And you want to click add current because that will add into your project that you're working on and will create another little layer for you. Let me size this down a little bit. And Jolie, as you're resizing that, is you're not having to hold shift to resize it and keep the proportions. It's automatically keeping the proportions for you. Is that correct? Correct. Awesome. Unlike some other applications where you have to be super mindful of that. Yeah. And then what I am doing is on your layer section, you see these little check boxes, and these are your little visible check boxes. I am just going to click on the bottom one, the saved one, your clean version that you haven't touched. And I just want to click on that so I can figure out how I want my logo and where I want it. And this, you're just, um, let me see, you know, lagged for a second. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, when I click on that visible, it will pop up and I can see it, it's lagging. I'm sorry, there you go. Mm -hmm. So, and you can play around with the logo. You can add it in different locations. Something you can do also is clicking on the, the three little dots right here. You can actually rename your layers. You can rename the photos that you're working on specifically. So if you were working with strategic partners, you can maybe put in their, uh, their information. You can put the name of the company. So that way it's a little bit easier for you to find if you want to work on something specific. Uh, when you have, you know, a couple strategic partners on here, it's a little bit easier to be able to work on their layer and work on their photo. And if you, if you find yourself building something rather robust that ends up having like six, seven, eight, ten layers, um, sometimes it, visually they give you a nice little icon, but sometimes, especially if it's text and it's not real legible, um, it makes life a little bit easier if you, from an organizational standpoint, to know what's on each of those layers. Yes. Cool. So now what I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to take out, I want to add my cloud background. So I just took out this visibility. This is what you're working on right now. And I am going to click back on images, add an image. This is the easiest way to find stock images. They have amazing options and they always have, they always update them. So specifically for this one, I wanted clouds and today I really couldn't find that, but I found my favorite ones in the heaven section. Mm -hmm. it, is. it constantly refreshes, so you just kind of got to play with it. There you go. Let's work on that one today. So I double clicked on it, and you want to add to current. You don't want to create a new one. Now, this is another layer. Now, I'm going to bring on the right hand side on the layers, I'm just going to pull it down just on a little bit so that way it now shows up in the background and so you you can play with it you know figure out how you want to work it but that is the best way to do it and your mountains look pretty decent right right they look good mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so next I want to work on my coloring. So for this particular one, I just want to do black and white. I have the clouds selected. So I'm just going to click on black and white. I like the Pixlr black and white standard one, but if you wanted to specifically work on it, you could work in the color section in the light section to figure out what you want to do best. And they have many options in like toning, filling, and curves. But for this, it's super simple just to click on the black and white option. And clicking on the mountain layer, I also want to turn on the black and white. Since I'm going to be adding color, uh, since I'm going to be adding text to this, I want to blur this out. So going down to filter, mm -hmm. I'm going to blur it out just a little bit. And right now I'm working on the mountains. I like the, let's work on number seven. I like the number seven blur. And then again, I'm going to the right hand side and clicking on my other cloud layer and I'm going to match that up. So I'm just going to put seven in here so it automatically blurs correctly. As you can see, I still have the Women's Council logo bright and uh, in color and that is because it's the top layer and the layers can be kind of confusing when you're trying to figure this out. But this, uh, you just want to make sure, especially working with black and white, any of your layers that you want visible uh, needs to kind of be on top and make sure that it's not in the black and white setting. So now let's click on text. So this specific one I wanted to I, have it. I like nice to... job. <laughs> Thanks. I was prepared. I see that. <laughs> So working on, I like this quote, it's the, if passion drives you, let reason hold the reins. So I try to, especially with my Women's Council uh, pages, I like to add different quotes once a week. And so this is one that I'll be doing and you can play around with the text and figure out how you want it centered, if you want it bigger, if you want different colors. And you can also before you put the text in, you could always save this photo and put it into Canva and play with the different fonts on there as well if you wanted to kind of take it up a notch. But this is this gives you a good option in just kind of adding simple things. So let me see. There you go. Cool. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I want to take all of these layers and put it into one. It's kind of the layers are kind of like your sandwich. You you have your base you have your bread, and then as you add things, you want to make sure it all condenses down. And that's what you're going to be doing in this section. So on your right hand side, what you'll do is you'll click the three dots on the top layer. And you just want to scroll down to flatten image. And this will condense it all into one and it's a lot easier to save. And then all you'll do is click save and save it in and uh, you're good to go on that one. Now I want to show you really quickly just kind of what we did because it's kind of cool. And um, from a graphic design standpoint, um, an ad additional piece of advice I would say here is while you still have it as layers, go ahead and save that off as a file with the layers so you can always come back to it and the layers will be there. Uh, Pixlr plays pretty nicely, um, but I haven't banged on it enough, meaning if I flattened it and it stays in there when you log into Pixlr, it says here are the projects you've worked on. What Pixlr. I don't, yeah, what I don't know, Julie, I don't know if you can answer this, um, is if you flattened it and you got out of it and came back, would it have the history exactly? So no, so it sticks. So yeah, it's so, stuck once you go in. So protect yourself from yourself again and save a version that has the layers. And then once it's finalized and you're ready to post it, flatten it, save that as a secondary version so that if you are like Sam Powell and misspell just about everything, you have the ability to sweep back in and make the corrections or make the edits, add another strategic partner or whatever the scenario might be. I like that. There you go. So from this is what we started with. Uh, then we went in and changed out the mountains. So we took away the sky and we added the clouds, we did it black and white, we had that logo, and then we added the text. And so that's all we did into that image. And 
if you go step by step yesterday, Sam kind of walked me through Pixlr and she took it step by step with me. And so it's, it can be really intimidating looking at this because I told her before, I was like, I don't know how to use this very well. And so going step by step and being able to play with the sidebar and especially with the Pixlr X, it's a little bit easier to use than the Pixlr E and just user friendly um, for beginners. So that's what we did on the first one. Example one, you did a beautiful job. Thanks. You betcha. So then so in example two, uh, we're going to focus on a portrait, for example. And what we find a lot in the work that we do uh, in our personal, in our business, and for our volunteerism is every once in a while, um, so let's say we're doing a um, panel and seven people send in photos for this panel and every one of them is varied and different for whatever reason. And so let's say I had a pimple on my face and I'm feeling some kind of way, or the image that was sent to us has red eyes, um, or uh, there's something stuck in my tooth in the photo I sent you. There's quick and dirty ways that we can uh, clean up some of these uh, pieces to the puzzle when any image comes your way. So Julie has a couple of things that she's gonna do to an image to just give you a taste and flavor of the capabilities. Yeah, so I am going to click on add image. This is once you click on Pixlr X. And you're going to click on the headshot that you want to work with. Today I'm going to work with Amber de la Garza. And I am going to create new on this one just because I don't want to add it to any of my projects that I'm working on. So this is our headshot. So our first rule always is heading over to the right hand side and clicking duplicate. You can also, again, go into Arrange and click Duplicate that way. So you have two options on how to duplicate. For this specific image, I am not going to work on resizing. There's no resizing needed. There's no arranging needed. Um, any, there's not any cropping. And then we're going to work on cutting out. But first, I want to blur her background. So her background's already blurred a little bit, but I want to add a little bit more blur and I want her to really pop in this photo. So I'm going to go down to filter and I'm going to amp up blur. About. Don't, get, don't get scared. <laughs> it's all part of the magic. It's all part of the magic, I promise. And we, we wanted to, in a way, kind of duplicate what we're able to do on some of our, our um, iPhones and Androids, where you can do the 3D um, picture effect in a way. So we want to have a nice blur background and yet have her face and hair nice and sharp. Um, so uh, Jolie is going to work some magic and show you how you can do that with these layers. Yes, so I did, I did 65 blur. You can go as crazy as you want with that. So I'm going to go back into cutout. Now when you, I want to highlight when you are working on the blur, making sure, especially with this, and you'll see once we're done with it, um, how those layers are important, but making sure that your first, your, uh, your original is the visible mark is checked off. So that way you're not working on the original and you're just working on that duplicate layer that you just duplicated. So it's really, you can see the layer that you're working on by the highlighted uh, selection around the layer. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, so on the right hand side, you just want to make sure you do that because that is something that can happen if you don't select it. I did that multiple times. Mm -hmm. So going into cutout, I want to click on magic cutout. And this we're going to keep her face. And let's bring in. I want to draw cut out. Sorry. There you go. That's okay. I was going to let you. I was just like, okay, she's playing with it a little differently. I like it. <laughs> because I'm, well, in, and, and in your defense, Julie, because her face is generally speaking almost all the same color, um, mm -hmm. go ahead and do it and see what happens. It does that. Oh, what well, no, I'm just saying you don't want to. So do remove. Yeah, and it will it will remove a good bit of it. But mm -hmm. to, to your point, it's a good test, but what's gonna be easier is using your paintbrush in this example. Yeah. But what we encourage you to do is bang on the application, really experiment with it, um, because there's, of course, like a hundred ways to do this same example that Jolie's showing you. So making sure that you're on your paintbrush, your draw cutout, 
and you want to click remove. You're clicking, you're removing the blur on that duplicate layer. And so as you can see, it's coming out clear and I'm just gonna pull out that size a little bit more. Yeah, and so specifically what she's doing is cutting out this pieces of this layer and it's got a nice soft edge because of the paintbrush and the softness you can see at her 12%. Um, and what we're doing is exposing the original layer that's below where she was in sharp focus. So if that makes sense, right? And you can see in the little icons over on the right that it legit is kind of showing you that it's actually stripping out or cutting out pieces of this top layer. And so you can actually do some pretty fine detail um, in the hands, in the hair, and you could go to a much smaller brush if you wanted to, to really play with the edge working. Um, but we find even just banging on it with the size of the paintbrush, it does a really nice job in here, uh, cutting out some of the detail around her hair. So we're pretty, pretty impressed with its capabilities. If you were in our Canva class last Friday, um, it also has a cut out feature that we're also pr rather pretty impressed with. Um, and Jolie's gonna show you this same image uh, using the Canva example as well. But look how, how it's starting to come together with the, the vision that we had for this photograph. And I, I, I love this feature to be able to blur it out more. So just to give you an example, so this was without the blur, uh, the blur that we added extra into the background and then with it. So that's a huge difference to be able to add. And Jolie, you can see that it looks like right on her hand, right about her ring, about where her ring is, that we, yeah, if you, it'll show you um, some of the cleanup on the other side. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you can see the tiny little specks, but not the end of the world. I just, if anyone else was noticing, that's what you're seeing. Cool. Cool. Thank you for that. Of course. So now let's work on the eye glare. So that's something that when we were playing with this headshot, we noticed that we wanted to work on that eye glare a little bit and take away. So I'm just clicking on the zoom on the right hand side, clicking on my space bar so I can pull her eyes in front. And let's click on to... Uh, Jolie, in, in this particular case, will you also make another duplicate of your background so that we can show the before and after of the eyes easily? I knew you were gonna, but I just wanted to beat you to the punch. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So now let's work on those eyes. So what you're going to do is click on this, making sure that I'm giving you the yeah, tiny brush patch band-aid. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we are on your retouch and you wanna click on the band-aid, the heal and repair. And then you want to click on patch. You want to go to a small, you're, you're going to play with the size, but specifically with the eye, we're not going to work on the full eye. We don't want to hit the center because then it, her eye turns brown and it doesn't have any natural look to it. So we're just going to kind of work on the outer edge of those little dots as clean up as natural as possible. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more Thank you. on her eye. So once I'm just kind of click around, hit those little spots, especially up here. And I know up close, it looks kind of weird, uh, but when we are zoomed out, it will look like you haven't touched it at all. So just clicking on the outer edges. Again, I want to keep that center intact um, just so that way it still has that natural look. And so it's, clicked out that glare a lot. So here was the original eye. Oh, did I do that right? No. So original eye and then the new eye. So it's just taken out most of that glare um, as best as possible to make it look again natural as possible. Now we're going to touch the teeth. So everyone always wants their teeth whiter. And especially in headshots, it's easier to do. Again, you can get a little carried away um, in that. So we are going to go on to retouch again. And I'm gonna zoom in, hit that space bar so I can move it so her teeth are in center. And now I'm going to dodge and burn. 
I mean, her, her teeth are pretty white, but we thought it'd yeah. be really cool to just, in a demonstration purposes, show you the capability. And then we are going to click on mode on lighten, uh, especially with teeth. And then your range, you want light as well. Brush size, again, depending what you're working with. So specifically teeth, um, you can play around with it, kind of see how big you want it because let's tone it down just a little bit more and just kind of highlight those teeth. And again, it see that how it's working, how it's lightening. And you could even zoom in on the image more if you wanted to. There's no like wrong answer here. Depends on sort of how detailed work you want to go. So the bigger you make the magnification, the smaller you end up wanting to make the brush size. And because we've softened the brush as well, the default is already pretty soft at 50%. It allows um, you to have a little bit of room for error uh, so that it's not a really harsh circle every time she's clicking on it. So she can go even smaller on the brush and hit the smaller teeth on the inside. And look what a difference that kind of makes, right? So simple for your own headshots that you're doing for your promoting of your business. Um, and I'm not saying to manipulate houses in any way, um, but if there is a reason to go in and make a change or a correction, here's some tips to, to be able to do that. But from primarily um, working from a building stuff for women's council or your own business, um, here are some tweaks you can do. So just to show you that difference between the teeth, here is the original and here is the new one. So you can see that difference. Um, it just, it's a nice little change. And it, again, you don't, like she was saying, you can, you know, be super specific, um, but especially with this portrait, just because you don't, you don't have to be that detailed um, if you don't want to be. So then you can go back into adjust if you want to add or if you want to go to filter, you can add sharpness to the image if you want clarity, smooth, if there's any filters that you need to do. Obviously, this is a headshot, so it's already been filtered um, and kind of detailed the best way. But if you wanted to add any more, you could. And that is the headshot. So again, I'm just going to go up to here on the first layer, making sure all the layers are checkboxed, which means they're visible and then clicking those three dots. After, you, after you've saved it, of course, as a layered version, then you will flatten it and make a saved secondary version. Yes. That's what I heard, that's what I heard Jolie doing over there. Yes, yes, yes. And then you're going to click Save, um, and then you can save this onto your computer. Again, checking your quality. We always recommend the highest quality possible if you can. And, uh, and just going on to PNG is normally the best one to choose, but you can also do JPEG as well. And, um, and you'll show them the, here you go. Never mind what you said. Okay. <laughs> so we were talking about background removal and showing you on here. Uh, but like we were talking about last week on Canva, you can also do that on the premium version. On the premium version, you do have to pay a little bit per month. Uh, but you can, you saw kind of the steps it took on Pixlr to do the background work. And on Canva, I just have our, she was our speaker this week. So I just have her headshot saved on here. And because I just want to make sure, I just have her headshot selected and I will go to effects on Canva in our background remover. And we just want to show you what Canva can do versus Pixlr on like the background remover, if that's something that you're worried about. And that Canva does a really good job just to kind of show you the differences, what you can be doing. I kind of love if you blow her up just a little bit more, her coming off that, see what I mean? Like that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Right. I like it. Um, not that this has already happened as a presentation, but um, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I like it. There you go. So those are, you know, our two examples on Pixlr. Um, just we wanted to highlight again, something you could do for your headshots, uh, as well as something you could, you know, edit those photos for your women's council or your personal uh, work.
And so the, the idea being here is we didn't want to get too crazy with a, a lot of different examples for you. So we wanted to show you just a couple of examples because we're hoping that it gets your wheels turning on, oh, so now I can take this and add layers and tweak and adjust and cut out and blend and adjust various layers. Like you've got a lot of flexibility in, in control um, that is different than the flexibility and control that you have in Canva. We do highly recommend and encourage um, using the simplest process to get your finish, your end game, um, your goal, goal based thinking is so if you can start in Canva first, we encourage that because it it is enough to be dangerous and can get the job done. And if you need something a little more sophisticated, then maybe just strip out the piece you need to play with in Pixlar and then bring it right back into your design elements that you've already been working on in Canva. So that's kind of our dog and pony show. We're happy to show um, some other stuff. If you guys have an idea for um, something that you're working on and you're having a struggle with, or you have this kind of image that you don't know how to, to work with, and we can give suggestions and share that with you. We also want to make sure that you know that we are available if, you know, when we're offline together, if you were trying to build something and you kept you're running into a wall and starting to get really frustrated, we can come into a Zoom um, interaction with you. You can share your screen with us and show us where you're struggling. And what's super pretty awesome with Zoom is we can you can actually give me control of your computer and I can be like, okay, so here's the way that I might go about it and give you the control back and then you do it the same way. So it's a really great ability to have a teaching tool. And we're not just saying, in this class, that's the only access you have to us, is we would love to be available as a resource if you run into struggles that we can help you with. Yeah, so I just put my contact information in the chat. Nice, very cool. I will as well. <laughs> so that being said, we wanna open it up to questions, comments, um, obstacles you're running into, and for Women's Council, of course, we always would like to know, and Nashua would always like to know, what other things would you like classes to be created on that you maybe haven't seen or you've seen, but you'd like um, a more in-depth explanation or cursory, whatever it might be, we just wanna open it up for some dialogue. So please unmic yourself, which you are obviously, and um, join the conversation if you'd like. I have a couple of questions. Um... First question, or first statement, I guess. Great job, thank you. I was not familiar with this at all, so um, great to see it. Um, one question, I've used Canva a bit. I don't have the paid version. Um, so can you um, save images uh, as transparent through Pixlr on, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the next question is, how did you guys make your Zoom backgrounds? Uh, in, we actually make them in Canva. In Canva, okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, so I, and what, what is super fun about Canva, in, in my opinion, is the ability to duplicate in that same series. And so if I went to my Canva right now, which I'm not ready for, but um, I think uh, Jolie might be able to demonstrate this. Do you want me to share your Canva, yeah, of your course. backgrounds? Okay. Yeah, oh, I can see it is all 13. <laughs> um, is I like the idea of, because uh, I build, as you can only imagine, a different background depending on the environment that I'm about to, that I'm about to walk into, and even Jolie and my logo, um, we want to share this sort of concept of imagine that's a strategic partner. Imagine Jolie and I have paid to be um, the sponsors of your Zoom class that you're going to put on or an event that you're going to put on. Um, so the ability to feature them in a, a custom made background for a Zoom environment that whoever registers for an event, what if you sent them a link to that background and as a request or requirement to attend that class to promote that sponsor that you have everyone bring in that background. Now the only hiccup there is everyone's environment that we're in. So not everyone has a green screen. So I have a green screen so I can move pretty freely. Jolie does not happen to have a green screen. And so you can see her hair um, doesn't have the best cutout happening because it can't read her background quite as well. And so I think the idea in concept is really quite fantastic and beautiful in practice as a practical, if we had 50 people on this call right now and we asked all 50 people to make this their background, um, you would be, it'd be interesting to see just the diverse in quality that would show up for that. But I still think it's a really neat use of the technology. Yeah, and so Canva has, um, if you go onto just Canva's website, 
and you just click in the Zoom backgrounds, they have a huge selection of them. They have like the video ones. Um, this is the one that I did for our strategic partner. And so I just uploaded that and adding the logo and the Zoom sponsored by. We also had a bingo night this week. And so I changed that out with the other strategic partner. But Canva has some really cool backgrounds that you can play with. And um, I will mention that because there are video backgrounds um, available, it really depends on your system software, um, the processor, on whether it has the ability to, for you to have a um, video background. So for example, even on my, my newer computer, which is a newer old computer, it's a 2017, um, it does not have the processor. So I, as excited as I am about video backgrounds, I can't have one. So no, cut your losses. <laughs> Build fun stagnant ones. <laughs> Anyone else have questions, comments, projects they'd like some support on, on or offline? Oh, the instructions for accessing it? It's pix pixlar.com, um, but we'll put it in there. It was a great presentation. Thanks, Thank Rose. you so much. And I was trying to make a collage on my iPad. I had I had like five photos of my father-in-law when he was um, really young, and I wanted to send it to my um, to my grandson, my my sons, but it was really cool, and I didn't I never used this. So thank you so much. No, that's awesome. I think um, you. You, you know what just came to mind is um, those people that I've seen some of these sessions um, where they'll host a um, vision board. And anytime I'm asked to attend those, of course, because it's a lot of paper, I don't attend. And um, this is such a great way to, especially since we're in this quarantine sort of concept, is what a cool way to create a virtual, like an electronic vision board. And you could do a lot of it in a Canva, um, meaning if you went to Google as if it was magazines and uh, searched for images that were the inspirations for you, bring layers of it into Canva, drop out the background in each of those images, and then organize it to make an elegant vision board for yourself. Um, in case you're listening um, national, maybe we host a electronic vision boarding um, sometime after our mid-year for those that want to prepare for the second half of 2020. I also want to say that if I'm building it in Canva, my vision board, there might be an image or two that's giving me some trouble and not cutting out beautifully and elegantly, and that would frustrate me, is I would bring those specific images into an application like the Pixlar X and with a paintbrush cut, cut around, you know, to cut out so that it, it just satisfies my need for quality, if that makes sense. But what a great demonstration of the two applications. Vision boarding is an amazing example of how to use these two applications together. Thank you, because I'm doing one now. I'm doing a vision board right now, so I'm saying this is great. No, that's it's funny awesome. that you bring that up, because that was one of the things on my list of um, like Zoom happy hours was to do a virtual vision board happy yeah. hour. Um, like, I just put that on my list today, and then you Oh, that's great. That's kind of yes. Yeah, so I, th I think National could put one on, um, and I think each local network, how fantastic, or what sort of a nice, um, you know, we were talking about this today from uh, Illinois leadership perspective, is as uh, different states are extending our stay-at-home orders, Illinois just extended ours through the end of May, so we're another 30 days. And so we like this concept of encouraging each of our networks to host a leadership, you know, like electronic retreat, a Zoom retreat, and have a conversation about now that it's been extended, let's do some kind of reset and a planning for our next 30 days, 45 days, so that we are continuing to create content and education and training and places and spaces for our membership to come and, and be a part of a community larger than their own box in the sky or single family home. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, right. I had trouble doing this, but if I have a photo and maybe it's my photo, and in front there, there, there's word, like stay safe, let's say. But I want to remove my photo and put somebody else there. How can I do that? Um, I'd almost need to see the image, but what I'm, what I'm envisioning is um, you're wanting to strip out the person behind the words. And right. so it might, it might be the easiest way to actually select the words and then um, 
this concept of inverting the selection of the image and then having it delete everything behind it so that now you just have the text that if you import another image that's and what i'm trying to do yeah and yeah. reposition it as a layer below that text now that text will show up on the replacement person image yeah okay thank you that's where my mind goes <laughs> if i need help i'll call you yes <laughs> absolutely you too jelly <laughs> No, it was good. This was a great, a great class too. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. We, we love and one of my one of the things that I, I just want to do a shout out to Jolie because um, I thought she did a really awesome job on the class and we chose to have her lead it in this way. And she kind of hinted at this, so I know it's okay to safely say this in this space. It's before yesterday, she had barely touched the thing. She had no idea. I've never touched Pixel in my life. And so the real, the real takeaway here is obviously you need a super good instructor. I'm just kidding. Um, that, that the ability to learn the learning curve is really not that big on an application like this. You know, Jolie's pretty, pretty badass. But if Jolie can in a 24 hour period really sort of learn enough to present to a larger audience with confidence, um, that's pretty impressive to me, which also means a good portion of our membership could, you know, after a short lesson like this, really start to then just go in and play on it and not be afraid that you're going to break anything because you've protected yourself from yourself by creating and duplicating layers as you're starting to be masterful. And I'm not saying just duplicate the background layer. As you start to do complex things, you're like, okay, I want to experiment. Um, duplicate that later layer. Um, and then and then play on the new modified layer, but also know that you can undo unlimited. So if you do 10 steps forward and you're like, oh, shouldn't have done that, you can undo 10 okay. steps back, but you'll miss the pieces that you did in between. But as, as you plan it, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you so much, ladies. Thanks everyone for being here. And, and because this is recorded, we also encourage um, if you would help be the voices with us and share with your network, share with your people. Um, I will. Because, because this is available as a post-recorded product, you could absolutely share it to your network and um, talk about what you learned in the class, encourage people to also watch it, and then you can become sort of the contact within your network to help them understand some of the nuances. And you also know that you have access to us, but you know, we want to empower everyone um, to have more skill sets so that we all are a little bit better with each class that we attend. Thank you. We will. Okay. I will. <laughs> all right. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Rose. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Sam and Julie. Thank you. Our pleasure. Next. Have a great night, everyone. I love you. I'm sorry I was so distracted. Okay. You can watch it later. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Women's Council. Thank you. <laughs>